Hello my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, join me once again as we continue our series of super ultra budget deck techs. That's right, if you haven't seen the series already, whether you're new to the channel or not, this is again going to be the series where we will not have to spend a single rare or mythic to build any of these awesome decks. Dude. Keep talking. That's right. For those of you who are, again, trying to get yourself started on Magic Arena, these are going to be perfect for you to get yourself going so you can save up for some of the more bigger, more powerful decks down the line. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's reveal the deck that we're playing today, a deck that I am simply calling, basically, Life Gain. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Longtime viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right into it. So our life gain deck today is using Celestia colors of white and green. We're looking at an average mana curve about 1.7. We're looking at 36 creatures, which is a lot, but definitely we're going to need all of them. We'll have four instants and only 20 lands. The game plan for our deck is very straightforward. Actually, it's even more straightforward than most of our mono red decks out there. But in any case, the whole point, as I mentioned, is, of course, to gain a ton of life and use that life to pump up our two main creatures, which we'll talk about in just a moment, to make them super big and overwhelming to just smash our way to victory. In order to do that, however, let's go ahead. Let's talk about some of the cards that give us a bunch of life. So in the one drop slot, we have Leon and Vanguard here. So as long as we have three creatures out on the battlefield, once we get to our combat, it gets a pump and also it gives us one life. Lunark Veteran, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, also gives us one life. All Embark Escort here doesn't actually give us any life, but its ability allows us to give us some protection against the creatures that we're going to be pumping up, which we'll talk about in just a moment. That's a surprise tool that can help us later. And then finally, we have Ruin Lurker Bat. So this is a new card that's a 1-1 Flip Flying and Lifelink, and also has at the beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn, you get to scry one. So for those of you who have forgotten what does descend do, the card basically reads that you descend each time a permanent card is put into your graveyard from anywhere. We'll talk about again what cards can trigger this in a little bit. In the two drop slot, we have one other card here, which is Prosperous Innkeeper, which also works just the same as Ludark Veteran here. Anytime a creature enters the battlefield, it'll help us gain one life. And also, of course, when it ETBs for the first time, you'll also get a treasure to help us do a little pseudo ramping. As far as the three drop slot, we'll have a couple more payoffs here. We have Inspiring Overseer here. This Angel Cleric, when it enters the battlefield, will also gain us one life. And also, we get to draw a card out of the deal. Not too bad for a simple little flyer. But now let's talk about, of course, the payoffs for the deck. So technically, we have one here, Angel of Vitality. This one, however, is a little bit different, where it reads, with this 2-2 Flying Angel, if you would gain life, you gain that much life plus one instead. Angel of Vitality will also get a plus two, plus two pump as long as you have 25 or more life. And in this deck, that's pretty easy to pull off. So this actually gives us a pretty decent flying beater for the mid to late game if we just need to close it out, if we need something evasive. However, let's talk about, of course, the two stars of the show. So we have the one and only Johnny's Pride Maid here. A simple little card that reads, whenever you gain life, you put a plus one, plus one counter on the creature and also its counterpart here is going to be Terralasa Moon Dancer. So this Celesnia Elf Cleric is the 2-2 that reads whenever you gain life not only do you get a plus one plus one counter on the creature but also you get to scry one. So every time we get a little bit of extra life this can help us filter out our next draws to ensure we can keep getting hits and this will make sure that we don't run out of the gas for our next several turns. As far as how we protect our Bane game plan we actually don't have too many options for us but that's only because again we're trying to maximize as much as we can creature wise to get all the value out of that. So I did mention earlier, but all embark export is going to be again one of our possible protection spells once we put some plus one plus one counters on our either Terralasa or Johnny's Pride Maid. In terms of trying to get the finishing blow against certain attacks out there that we have to face, we also have one other card which is our only non-creature spell in the deck, God's Willing. So this one mana instant speed enchantment just reads target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn and you get to scry one. You can either use this defensively or offensively depending on the game plan and what's going on on the battlefield. Ideally, I of course, you're going to want to put this on your creature prior to you swinging, so that way you can just dish out some damage and basically be unblockable to get your win. As far as the rest of the cards in the deck, mostly it's just going to be all the basic lands that you can think of. So we have planes and forests, of course. We're going to be using Blossoming of Sands and specifically Cabaretty Courtyards. We want these specifically because, again, they will gain us some life. We can still trigger off Terralasa and, of course, a trigger off a Johnny's Pride Mate to get more value out of those cards. 
Also because, well, again, this is a budget deck, so that's the best we can kind of come up with. Since, of course, we're looking at this ideally for best of one, if you do want to play this in best of three and you want to see how far you can take the deck, for your best of three sideboard options, you have Brave the Elements here. So if you're trying to do a more go-wide strategy, you can then play this instead. This won't be valuable with your Prosperous Innkeeper. However, all of your other white creatures will gain protection from the color of your choice, allowing you to just swing even more to do more damage. Deafening Silence here is going to be your best option, again, to protect you against combo decks and control decks out there. Lucky Offering here can destroy an early game target enchantment or artifact and also helps you gain some extra life, which is great for pumping up, again, our creatures and game plan. So Guy Lantern here is going to be your best graveyard hate option. Case of the Gateway Express here, really a sweet card here that I really am happy to see from the Mark Karlov Manor set. So this is definitely going to be an auto include as your choice of cheap spot removal and also to give you a little extra pump if you want to focus again on go wide. Garrick's Uprising here is going to be another option for us. Most of your cards won't really get much of a pump, but being able to give them all trample really helps us again push against more chump blockers in case we have boards that get gummed up quite often. And then finally, our last card in the deck is going to be Kutzil Malamet Exemplar. So this legendary cat warrior just says, your opponents can't cast spells during your turn. Whenever one or more creatures you control with each with a power greater than its base power deals combat damage to a player, you get to draw a card. We don't worry too much about the secondary ability, we just mostly want that first ability where it prevents our opponents from casting spells while we're trying to do our thing. And now that we have the deck tag out of the way, here's going to be, again, your basic game plan for you. And really, it is going to be as simple as you can think, even simpler than any other deck I've probably ever created for this channel. Ideally, just get down your early game life gain creatures, and then once you start putting down into Johnny's Pride Maid or a Terra Lassa, you basically just kind of start pumping them up like crazy and just smashing every single chance you get. Yes, this is going to be as simple as can be, but of course you do have a little bit of longevity with cards such as Angel of Vitality and Inspiring Overseer. Hopefully with the amount of life that you will gain, even if your opponent has some more overwhelming creatures with better value, most of the time they'll take a couple extra turns, which buys you enough time to keep filtering through your deck with Terralossa. It'll help you get enough pump with cards such as your Inspiring Overseer, your Angel of Vitality, to help keep drawing a couple extra cards and ensure that you can just keep pushing your opponent back and forth. Sometimes you're going to have some fights where it be does become a battle of attrition where you might end up with some turns where as your opponent starts swinging and going wider, it's going to be harder for you to keep blocking, so you might have to sacrifice a couple of your life gain creatures. But remember that some of your cards do get benefits from that. That's why we have cards like Ruin Lurker Bat, which of course can get take off with the Descend ability, allowing you to keep filtering through your deck, and also has life gain and also is evasive. Remember that cards like Lunark Veteran can also be recasted from the graveyard as Luminous Phantom, so that means even if you do end up having creatures that have to be sacrificed or killed, they'll end up gaining you some life back, which again will keep triggering off your game plan and ensuring that you can hopefully get to victory. Of course, it comes as no surprise that in the main board, of course, your biggest weakness is, and I know I probably say this a thousand times with many of other deck techs, but especially with this one, since it's so creature heavy, Rass will hurt you, you'll feel really sad about that. Spot removal tends to be a bit of a problem for the deck, but again, if you can at least get one or two extra creatures and keep gaining life, no matter how many creatures they keep destroying against you, you'll be able to rebuild fairly quickly, and your deck is very low to the ground, so it shouldn't take you too long to rebuild if you do have to deal with a couple of choice spot removals, but mostly it's going to be wraths that tend to hurt you far more than anything, because aside from God's Willing and All Embark Escort, you otherwise don't have too many options for protection. But if you can at least manage to protect one of your Johnny's Pride Mates or the Moon Dancer, you shouldn't have any problem getting to your victory. Of course, the best advantage that you're going to have, of course, is any decks that have a lot of small creatures tend to then fall very quickly to your deck because once you start getting your Johnny's Pride Mate to start building up a bunch of counters, as you keep swinging, you're going to keep applying more and more pressure to their game plan, which kind of forces many of our opponents into the corner, and they mostly won't have an option for you until they either find something with either Death Touch or maybe something with First Strike or just, again, that spot removal that tends to take out your game plan. So when those things happen, if you can see it coming a mile away, try to save up your Escort, save up your God's Willing, and you absolutely have to use them to then protect your key creature that'll help you get your win. Now, if this game plan actually sounds like something that's very appealing to you, of course, as always, like many of our other deck techs, we're going to leave on screen right now several of the other variants that we have built over the course of this time on the channel that you can look at to add on a couple of extra rares, maybe a couple extra mythics that'll help bolster this game plan and make it even more powerful and much more stronger and resilient to some of our main weaknesses in the deck. I'll leave those, of course, on screen right now so you can check those out at your leisure. And of course, check out the rest of the channel so you'll be able to see every variant you have if you happen to be a fan of this.
But with that out of the way, here are my final thoughts that I just want to give on the deck. To be perfectly honest, a lot of people tend to gravitate towards life gain decks in the early time that they begin playing Magic, and it makes a lot of sense why. I mean, when you have a ton of life, it makes it very hard for you to lose a match. So, to put it another way, if you are a fan of going big with some creatures, if you're a fan of gaining all the life to sponge any hit your opponent could throw at you, if you're a fan of decks that are super easy to understand and just surprisingly are very powerful despite how simple they look, definitely give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you manage to just build up a giant a Johnny's Pride Mate or a Terra Lassa, or just swing at your opponent with your Angels of Vitality, you'll be surprised at how well this deck can perform, despite how simple it may look. You'll be amazed at some of the victories that you can get against certain opponents, and you will definitely not only have a lot of fun along the way, but you will not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching everyone, and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later.